Yo, 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 what's up, all you burner stoners and potheads? This is Weedman420 with the Weedman420 Chronicles. How are all you v -v 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 vipers doing out there, Mrs. Weedman? Mr. Weedman? How the hell are you? I'm feeling fresh. Fresh and fancy free? Fresh. fresh. <laughs> Just fresh. <laughs> I love it. Hey, everybody out there in the world, hope you're smoking some big fat doinks while you're listening to the show. We're about to get normal, and we're smoking a pre roll that some people we met yesterday gave us and the name of the brand is old pal and i know they're a california company that came to illinois and they are selling pre-rolls and they are selling um ground flour in a really cool way to do it in an old school like tobacco, tobacco sack pouch, pouch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. one side is a tobacco pouch the other side is uh papers oh are there papers yeah in there's papers in there yeah. That. yeah there's papers That's on the other cute. side Really cool concept. First real, time. Yeah, and real retro uh, marketing and packaging. It, it's a neat brand. I yeah, like very it. neat. I yeah. like it because you don't have to worry about having a grinder. And if you're a good roller, unlike me, you have it already ground. You just drop just like just like a tobacco sack where you have fresh tobacco leaf ground already in there. And you Take just a pinch, pop put it in your it right paper. In your, right in your paper, roll it up, and smoke it up. It's great for great on the go, concept. convenience. Yeah. Especially, I think like it's ideal for traveling. Um, like if you go to a state, you're visiting a state that's legal and you don't have all your gear with you. It's a great brand to pick up and you're ready to go. You don't need a grinder. You don't need a bunch of other equipment. It's, it's pretty, pretty sweet. sweet. Yeah. They also have pre-rolls. So they gave us, we smoked, uh, we smoked with them yesterday, but they gave us a couple of, uh, pre-rolls to take home. And the one that they gave me is blueberry cookies. And there's actually information about blueberry cookies. Hey. Lighted it up. I'm going to light it man. up. I'm ready. So it's an indica diamond dominant hybrid, a 70-30. Uh, THC ranges from 19 to 20%. It was actually kind of funny because the THC is like 20.5% on this strain. Blueberry cookies, also known as blueberry Girl Scout cookies, is an indica dominant hybrid strain created through crossing the infamous blueberry Tahoe with the classic Girl Scout cookies thin mint strain. This tasty bud brings on amazing flavors, mixing fresh nutty mint with ripe blueberries. I would have to say it is fruity smelling uh, when you when I cracked open that tube, um, the aroma isn't bad either, with an earthly berry overtone that's extended by lemon and pine. The blueberry cookies high is every bit as addictive as its flavor, with well balanced effects that are better suited for an indica lover. Much to to the surprise of this writer, the high starts with a relaxing, warming body high that creeps up on you before spreading its calming tendrils from head to toe. I like it already. A cerebral lift comes next that gives you an increase in creativity without causing anxiety or paranoia. Ooh, very nice. Or affecting your energy levels. As your mind soars, your body will start to slip into a state of couch lock without too much sedation. Be careful with that, Mrs. Weed, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Blueberry cookies is often recommended to treat chronic pain, muscle spasms, or tremors, inflammation, and depression. This butter has heavy, dense, dark green, uh, olive green nugs with rich blue uh, undertones, fiery orange hairs, and spattering of chunky amber crystal cricones. Effects, creative, relaxing, uplifting. Uh, relieve symptoms is anxiety, chronic pain, depression, fatigue, and stress. Flavors are berry, lemon, mint, and pine. And aromas are berry, earthy, lemon, nutty, and woody. I got the berry and the earthy. Oh, your taste buds work, huh? Kind of, hardly. <laughs> Let me see that. I wouldn't really <laughs> quantify them as working. I take a medication, and the medication dulls my um taste. taste buds so i can taste for a couple of bites and then i'm like halfway into a meal and realize uh, i'm not even tasting this so then i just push the food away heavy it's like, flavor oh, what's on the, the tongue that's i can taste berryish that. very it's berryish nice. yes we had a good time yesterday on sunday we did we went to where we went to the flower ball yes and this was hosted by kvl international you can find them on instagram i'm sure they're on all platforms but they organized this wonderful event it was a few hours of an expo um then that went into a some sort of a reception that then went into a runway fashion show so we only went to the expo um and there was still a lot of kind of setup happening while we were there uh, models were there, like starting to prep and get ready, and lots of um, interviews going on, lots of photographers walking around, lots of it was just really cool. There was live art, uh, there were two artists that were painting yeah. live. Um, what else was it? There was there were DJs so playing you, music, yeah. When you walked in, 
there was a sign up area, and then there was a stage to the right with mm-hmm. the DJ playing music, and then they had vendors all along the outside, and then tables for people to sit, like really nice tables for people to sit, and then they had uh, a sesh bus in the back, and it's not the sesh bus that everybody hears about. It was a different sesh bus, but they had a, a, then they had some uh, you know cocktail bar, and they had a food little food bar. And uh, so there was a bunch of vendors outside. Too bad it wasn't like it was last Sunday when it was like 78 yeah, degrees and beautiful. Yeah, the weather wasn't super cooperative. It wasn't, it wasn't raining. Terrible. It was just chilly, you know, so you didn't really want to hang out outside that much. So the expo area was really nice. So you walked into the expo area, and there was a bunch of different brands. Uh, and it was cool to go talk to everybody and see what they were doing. They had some state officials there, too, handing out those stash bags, which I thought was cool. It was a crew, I think, was there. Crow, crew, C-R-O, you know, whatever they could, whatever it's Illinois State something. I can't always remember their name. Apologize about that. But they were handing out stash bags, locked stash bags, which I thought was really neat. And then uh, you had a bunch of vendors and, and people just talking about their brands. It was really cool. And then you walked down this long hallway, and it was a bunch of different artwork. And then there was the room where they were going to do the fashion show. And then there was a bunch of different artwork. And then down at the end was um, really cool. Uh, food vendors. Two food, uh, infused infused food vendors. One was. One was Mary and Jane's ice cream. Ice cream. And it was the delicious. Other, and the other was. Didn't get a name, but they were they were doing infused uh, sriracha. And, and infused honey. Infused honey. And then they were giving you tastes of their uninfused honey, which was absolutely positively fantastic. I mean, they gave you a nice scoop, and I was sucking on that spoon like. It was great. Oh, it was delicious. The but ice we, cream was insane. So yes, yeah, so we're gonna go to the ice cream now. The ice cream was fifteen milligrams per per scoop, but it was in, it was made with the honey, mm-hmm. and that fucking ice cream was with the out of this world. Honey. Yeah, the, yeah, with the yeah that ice cream oh was gosh. out of this world. Out of this world. I, I could have ate, like, bowls of that. Mm-hmm. Uninfused. But it was 15 milligrams. It was 15 Let's milligrams. not forget that part. <laughs> it was. It and was it delicious. Was, it we was both d- cleaned our bowl. Oh, yeah. I was licking yeah. that spoon clean. Uh, it was the first time I had a chance to try uh, Jane and Mary's ice cream. And I would tell you, it is rich. It is creamy. It is absolutely fan-fabulous-tastic. It is delicious. Delicious. I mean, I could not stop eating it. And they're doing hemp derived uh, THC, D- so nine. you can find that. You don't have to buy that in a dispensary. Yeah, they're doing uh, hemp derived. They're doing hemp derived Delta Nine, um, and uh, fantastic. So we ate that, and then I ate some of the few sriracha on a little uh, cracker, and with the you know just to try that too it was delicious. And then they had a nice little booth, pho- pho- photography booth, and an interview booth, which I thought was really cool. Some people a were red de- carpet of sorts. Yes, a red yeah. carpet. They had, there were some people decked out to the nines. Were, as the day was going on, getting closer to this like uh, midday reception, so you had tickets for the the vendor event that we went to, or you had tickets for this uh, reception and um, and the runway show, or you had tickets for both. We only had uh, vendor tickets. By the time we decided we would stay. They, the tickets were sold out for the runway, and so we just it just didn't work out. So, um, and we weren't really dressed. We were not dressed. We, my goodness, we like dressed, I didn't know what to, I, we know. dressed in our in our in our in our eight decades. We met four twenty gear, mm-hmm. and we didn't dress in like like there were people in suits. There were people there in were black, people like, like like to the nines, like like high fashion. Yes, not just dressed. We up were nice. dressed they as were dressed just m- like business, high fashion. like our business attire. Meaning, like I was wearing yeah. my business attire for me is my We Man Four Twenty Chronicles shirt. And uh, jeans. Uh, and jeans and uh, my hoodie and right. my hat and that's it that's what i wear that's my that's my outfit mm-hmm. and you were wearing uh phenomenal green shorts that matched our eight decades uh uh shirt that you were wearing the uh the um uh the one with the big cannabis leaf on it mm-hmm. and it matched perfectly and you wore a black blazer right mm-hmm. and combat boots mm-hmm. you looked amazing but we were not but it was daytime wear it was like, daytime it was wear daytime. yeah we were not <laughs> there were some people that looked fucking fantastic. Yeah, as the day came went on, yeah. it was just getting. It, I'm like, oh man, we are missing out on a really, really cool event. And we kept contemplating. Okay, do we go home and let the dog out and just see if we could buy a ticket while we're here? Let's just let's just go do it. Let's. Go. And then it was just. And then we proceeded to continue smoking. Yes. Yeah, so we went, on the ses, we went on the cess bus. Yeah. And I had bought ten joints with me and lit up 
I gave a couple away to some people who I knew. And then uh, we went on the bus, and it was just like we lit a joint. People next to us lit a joint. Another people, people had, had home grow, so everybody was passing yeah, the joints I, I, around. I had my home grow, and oh everybody wanted to try the home grows. So, which was really nice to see that everybody, once you mentioned home grow, people were like, oh, that's your grow. Oh, that's your grow. Oh, and that, then they wanted to try it, and everybody wanted to try everybody's home grow. It was yeah. so awesome to see because there's four people on there that had home grow, and everybody wanted to try everybody's home grow. On top of it, there was probably another f- ten to fifteen people in that bus. Yeah, kind of so, coming and going. Yeah, and there was a lot of joints, so we probably smoked. A hell of weed in mm. that we were in there for about 45 minutes we were and we already ate the ice cream yeah the ice cream hadn't kicked in no yet. the ice cream <laughs> and the sriracha hadn't kicked in yet so we were i just, think i hadn't infused chocolate too you might have uh we went to that chocolate little chocolate but i bar. don't think that was infused i think oh. that it will be infused okay doesn't matter i don't know it doesn't matter all i know is we smoked a hell we of joints a lot. and we ate that ice cream and and nothing had hit yet and next thing you know, we went to the old pal booth, mm-hmm. and Mrs. Wee Man rolled a joint because they were letting you. They had a rolling station there where you can roll your own joint. So Mrs. Wee Man was rolling a joint. I was talking to the uh, the marketing, uh, the brand ambassador, Cat, and I got to meet Rusty, the owner. And uh, it was super cool to talk to them a little bit about their brand because I really liked their marketing and what they were. It was really cool. They had couches and they had mm-hmm. all that. And the old pal look is pretty sweet. And. Uh, so I, they lit up a joint. I ended up smoking that with them. Then you came over with a joint, yeah, a second joint, not the one you rolled, but another joint because they, they put a oh, bunch yeah, of pre rolls on the right. table and you lit that up. I lit that up. For and some you and crazy I smoked reason. that whole thing on top of the four joints we were a part a part of in the in the uh, in the bus. So then we're walking around one last time. Just like, all right, we, let's do let's do another lap. One Make more sure lap. we visited everybody. Right. And go to the bathroom one last time here. before we hit the road. And yeah. we were bumped because we walked by the fashion show area and there were people like really Getting, dope. Yeah. Just like so looking so good. And we were I'm like, do we just stay? We're probably not gonna get lit into the fashion show, but do we wanna just sit and chill? And then it was like five o'clock and we knew we had to get home for Yuki to let her out. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we get in the car. And all of a sudden, we're, we're both a little high, and then we get home, and Mrs. Wee Man was like, the ice cream kicked in. Mm-hmm. And Mrs. Wee Man was baked. Yeah, I was, I was spinning. I was, <laughs> I was not good. We did not have an ounce of alcohol. No. I just had a and lot of weed. And we didn't eat either. Oh, and then we were like, I'm like, why do I feel so freaking baked? You had a bowl of cereal. That was it. I was like, okay, the breakfast. ice cream. All right. Oh, that joint. Oh, yeah, that joint. Yeah, I smoked. Okay. Yeah, I smoked a lot accumulation right now the edibles hitting in and then i was like we never ate today never ate we had bread like i had a bowl of cereal i had coffee and yeah i had a bowl (laughs) of cereal and coffee you had nothing and then the morning got away from us and i was working doing some day job stuff and next thing you know it was time to get ready when we ran out the door to the event and thinking there might have been food we could have bought from the food truck there and there was no food truck There there were Two vendors with food. Yeah, but we didn't even like right. even think about it, and uh, we didn't have any alcohol. We just had water, and uh, but we ripped and like yeah. it, you know so it was a mixture of being like over hungry and yeah. not realizing it, and then being over high. Right, we get home, you're really high, and you're like you're and you're like looking at me, you're like you're okay. I'm like I'm good. I just need to eat. I'm starving. Yeah, <laughs> and I just started tearing into tearing shit. into food. I was like there was a bag of chips over there. I started eating that. There was uh, peanut butter pretzels. I started eating. I that. cut up a tapi apple, and then we not, we didn't eat it. You didn't eat it, but. And then I'm like, we had leftover food that I want to make a quesadilla with. Oh, we had quesadillas. I made quesadillas. Yeah. And uh, so I made one for me, and then you made one. You wanted you you didn't want no part of mine, so you made your own. And then you ate that, Most and you of said it. you felt okay, and yeah. you went and laid down. And you passed out. Yeah, I'm like, oh, and you I woke just up need a an hour nappy. later. I, need a I was nappy. downstairs working on the on the podcast, and and Mrs. Weeman comes downstairs and does jumping jacks. I'm better. Yay! Look at me. <laughs> I'm back. No, I said I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> So a okay. She had a little too much. Yeah, a little too had to much. Little take, take a little break. Yeah, break. And that's what happens. You know, I mean, you didn't green out. You just, Mm-mm. you just. Uh, and I have to say, they do have. They did have a tent there. I don't yes. remember the people's names. Lit something is a company. I can't. Remember, but they're safe safety lit. Lit safety or something. Yeah, it's a company that comes out to these kind of events, and they have two people on staff to make sure if somebody does get sick or does green out, they're there to help you. Which I think yep. is awesome. Yep, emergency. It's yeah, it's yeah. an emergency. Yeah, so assistance. I thought that was really good too for yeah. a big event. Uh, like a, you know, when you go to a big, you know, you don't know what's going to happen sometimes at these festivals or these parties, you know. And it's good to have people that are not smoking mm-hmm. 
and or are smoking but are able to help you walk through your high your greened out high you know and uh be able to help you with your needs so i think that was very special so i thought it was a great event yeah next year we're gonna do the opposite we're gonna now we know we're gonna go to the fashion show because i I had heard somebody uh dm me going it was hey it was great to meet you great to talk with you and finally get introduced uh did you make it to the fashion show i said no we left early like it was packed Hmm. they said it was like mobbed Hmm. Like not bad, but it, right, it got but busy. It, it was yeah, cool. like the party yeah. really started. Yeah. <laughs> it was a good vibe. It was a good vibe. It was, it was fun. fun. It was fun. So, uh, but uh, good job. I love seeing parties like that, and hopefully we see more and more like that. And uh, yeah, so uh, this wee man. Yeah. Ready to get the show started? Let's get it started. Let's do this. THC versus THCA airing out the smoke of, of confusion. I've, been, I've talked about THCA before, and I've talked about THC, and I've talked about a lot of the cannabinoids. You see a lot of people talking about THCA now, a lot. So let's go into it. The alphabet soup of the entourage effect. Also, someone really uh, we had prior on the show on the Grow Hour was telling me that they they call it the concert effect now. The what? The concert effect. Oh. Instead of the entourage effect, they like calling it the concert effect. It's like when you go to a concert, like all the vibes like of every cannabinoid kind of like give you that vibe of going to a concert. Like when you hear like that surround music, you. surround like you with overtake. everything, the music yeah. and the vibe of being at a concert okay. kind of like, so the entourage effect or the concert effect, I think it's hmm. kind of cool. Like so, it's in stereo. Yes. Yes. Like everything is like there. Fuego. So, Huh? Everything is like <laughs> intense, a little more intense, right? In a good way. Yes. Uh, so it tells the story of how the plant interacts with the human body and mind. Research on the therapeutic value of cannabinoids like CBD, CBG, and THCV and more persist. As more about the endocannabinoid system is revealed, the world is getting more answers into those burning cannabis questions. The most common question about cannabinoids lately is THC versus THCA and what is the difference? It was funny too because this article came up after I was just having a conversation with somebody about THC and THCA. Hmm. So... Uh, so some frequently asked questions. People have many questions about THC and THCA, especially when the uh, controversy surrounding THC flower sales in states where cannabis is still illegal. When it comes to the chemistry, THCA and THC are different. As for consumable or inhalable cannabis products, there are distinctions worth noting. So let's dive into the, the asked questions of THC and THCA. When you were down in the in the keys and you were at that store and mm-hmm. he was saying it's delta nine it's delta nine or didn't he mention thca too to you or something like that too when you were down when you were talking to him about it and it came from thca it came from and you were like well it came from the hemp plant yeah you have that kind something of, like that yeah. yeah so it was weird so what is thca the acronym thca stands for tetro hydro cannabinolytic acid and it's precursor to THC. Like all cannabinoids, it's converted from uh, a, a CBGA, which is the cannabinoidic acid. <laughs> CBG <laughs> is the mother of all cannabinoids. CBGA is the mother of all cannabinoids. So an enzyme found in the human body called THCA synthesis pairs with CBGA, changing the compound to THCA. That's complex. A little bit of science there. Mm-hmm. So buds from the cannabis plant can have zero to 30 percent thca content this cannabinoid is most often found in raw cannabis okay should i read that again does that make sense to you like 10 times maybe all right right, let's do it one more time (laughs) the acronym thca stands for tetrohydrocannabinolytic acid and it's precursor to thc like all cannabinoids it is converted from cbga an enzyme found in the human body called THCA synthesis pairs with CBGA, changing the compound to THCA. Hmm. Buds from cannabis plants can have over 0 to 30% of THCA content. This cannabinoid is most often found in raw ca- cannabis. What is THC? We heat expo- with heat exposure, THCA is converted to THC. Right? Like when you decarboxylate it, you're taking that THCA and turning, converting it to THC. THCA drops a, a carboxylic group when heated, leaving behind the cannabinoid fame for having the psychoactive effects. The two cannabinoids have an almost identical chemical structure other than the dropped carbolic acids. Many cannabis consumers purchase products based on THC content. 
but studies continue showing that there's more to the picture. Is THCA intoxicating? THCA does not bind to the CB1 or CB2 receptors, which is where a cannabinoid does its magic in the brain. Before dropping the carboloctic acids, THCA is not a psychoactive cannabinoid. If eaten raw, THCA doesn't have intoxicating effects for most people. However, after smoking, vaping, or heating THC flour in a, la in a laser bong, the heat causes chemical composition to convert from THCA to THC. What are the potential benefits of THCA? Studies have investigated the possibility of therapeutic benefits of THCA, like how it impacts brain health and metabolism. Though a non-psychoactive cannabinoid won't bind to CB1 and CB2 receptors, it does interact with the endocannabinoid system. One study showed that neuroprotective properties of the cannabinoid based on action with the... Uh, I'm going to butcher this whole entire word, but then I'm going to give you the acronym. So, pero exomium proliferator activated receptors p p a r small y these receptors play a key role in regulating how the body takes vital sugars and in turn the metabolism this enticed research about the possibilities of thca for huntington's and other neurodegenerative uh, diseases when it comes to the brain, it's possible that THCA may be therapeutic agent of good for patients with Alzheimer's disease. The research combined THCA and CBDA based on previous research, highlighting the neuroprotective nature of the compounds. Results went as far as saying that the cannabinoids could have anti-Alzheimer's disease effects and make memory functions in the brain more resilient while mitigating memory loss. A later study explored the PPARY interaction as it related to fighting diet included induced obesity. Pharmaceutical PPARY agonists are used to reduce fat tissues and reverse complications of obesity. However, side effects of these include bone loss and osteoporosis. Researchers sought out more of how Delta-9 THCA could replace the medicine in a series of live animal experiments. Test results showed that cannabinoids could reduce body fat and improve the metabolism and inflammation impacted by diet-induced obesity. The cannabinoid may not get people high at room temperature, but it seems the compound may be valuable for other reasons. I'm going to take a little sip of water. What are the potential benefits of THC? Though THCA does not bind to the same receptors as THC, there is a crossover in the mechanism as at play when consuming THC versus THCA. As more states legalize the plant, more researchers are getting their hands on THC. This has led to research and survey exploring how the cannabinoid impact people's lives. One cannabis study sought an understanding of why cannabis consumers had a lower body mass index BMI. Researchers observed mice, both with the with or without regular THC consumption. The THC consuming group had a lower BMI unrelated to food intake or activity levels. This paired with research on THCA, making a connection between the endocannabinoid system and metabolism very likely. There is also research regarding cannabis with the active THC and pain relief, including that many patients are choosing weed over opioids. The power of THC and all the other cannabinoids in the plant is continually supported by science-based research. This is true whether cannabis compounds are psychoactive or not. What's the difference between not Delta 9, Delta 8, THC versus THCA? Those navigating the cannabinoid world built on the farm bill may come across many cannabis terms like THCA, Delta-8, Delta-9, and wonder what the difference is. Are they the same? The answer is yes and no. It comes down to vocabulary lesson. Man, remember the vocabulary lesson when you were a kid and you have to do your spelling words and you didn't get it right and your mom would whack you in the head? No. That happened to me <laughs> quite often. <laughs> Delta-9 is a short-term reference Delta-9-THC, and it can also refer to the precursor of the cannabinoid Delta-9-THCA. So listen up here. This is where a lot of people get confused. Let's read that again. Delta-9 is a short-term reference Delta-9-THC, and it can also refer to the precursor of the cannabinoid Delta-9-THCA. The compound is popular because of its psychoactive cannabinoid that grows mostly abundant in the cannabis plant. Years into the farm bill legalizing flower, hemp plants, and products, chemists learn how 
to synthesize a minor cannabinoid from CBD flower called Delta-8 THC. Though the cannabinoid didn't grow as abundantly in plants, it did have a psychoactive impact on consumption. This led to proliferation of products made with Delta-8 that are now available anywhere from online shops to gas station convenience stores, as Mrs. Weedman talked in the last episode. Over the years, Delta-8 products have grown in popularity due to the legal loophole. Some state lawmakers have stepped in to enforce their own regulations, but there is generally no regulatory oversight protecting the public from bad actors in the Delta-8 space. Final word on THC versus THCA. THC has long been the champion of the cannabis world, but it wouldn't be here without THCA. Or, don't forget it, none of them would be here without CBGA, <laughs> the mother mm -hmm. of all cannabinoids. The precursor to the psychoactive cannabinoid gets the whole party started, even if it doesn't get most people high. Both cannabinoids are valued for possible therapeutic benefits and each serve as their purpose. But as more people seek legal cannabis options, and on contrary, this still remains divided on legality from state to federal law. The semantics are getting cloudy. THC is being sold as a psychoactive flower, despite its inability to bind to the CB1 and CB2 receptors. Remember that, everybody. Remember that. These distinctions make the market more confusing for the kind of curious looking to try weed, pot, cannabis, marijuana for the first time. For now, it's safe to say that the battle of THC versus THCA, everyone's a winner. Hmm. So hopefully that helps. What's the factors, the factors, the fucking factors affecting your cannabis high, Mrs. Weed Man? <laughs> a hit from a bong can be much harder to manage for inexperienced users than a hit from a joint. So get to know the different ways of consuming cannabis. Remember the first time you hit the bong? Why? Remember the I first time? I think I drooled. You drooled all over it. <laughs> <laughs> like there's too many things. You want me to hold my breath and light the bong and pull, hold it the bong with this hand and lift the... <laughs> Oh my God! Lift the bowl with this hand and then light you it. You tried to put and your then... mouth around it too. No, the first I did. Time. That was not me. <laughs> bullshit, Mr. Weedman. That's bullshit. That was. That's not right. I, I did not it, do that. I think it was Polly's friend it that was. tried to do that. But you actually it was one of the guys. You drooled. Who did it. In I drew. I do admit. I I did drool. Maybe more than once. <laughs> I did. But total bullshit. <laughs> On the mouth around the bong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Getting high is a simple process, yet one that can be affected by many different factors. A lot has been said about cannabis about how little is really known about the plant. One of the most interesting parts of consuming it is how it can vary greatly depending on the user. Some people love its effects, and others claim it makes them feel paranoid and anxious. Cannabis leads to very personal and introspective experiences, affecting users differently. But there are a few outside factors that can influence how your body responds to the drug. Here are five of them uh, in order. Um, you can play around with them in order to have a better control of your marijuana high. So, number one, method. The most influencing factor on this list is the method in which you consume cannabis. Consuming an edible, smoking a joint, or taking a hit from a bong results in very different highs. For example, edibles take longer to have an effect, but produce a much stronger and long-lasting high than joints or bongs. A hit from a bong can be much harder to manage for inexperienced users than a hit from a joint. So get to know the different ways of consuming cannabis and tread carefully if it's your first time. Dosage. Dosage is also very important. The wrong dose can put you to sleep or prompt you into a really anxious state of mind. When trying out a new strain, consuming an edible, or dabbing, the dose you choose can make or break your high. Do your research and always start off slow and low. Tolerance. How experienced you are with the plant dictates how well you'll adapt to using it. Tolerance is personal, changing from user to user and making it likely for you and your friends to have different dosing levels, even if you share the same body types and level of experience with the plant. The more you consume cannabis, the more you'll get to know uh, how you feel and what your tol tolerance level is. Uh, location. Setting is vital when it comes to marijuana, dictating how the high will hit you. If you're in a crowded or empty space, you might end up with different highs. Having more of a party mood in the former scenario or a couch-like high in the later. 
If you're a beginner, the best way to consume marijuana would be in a space that feels safe with friends you trust. And the strain. THC and CBD-focused strains produce different effects. One contains psychedelic effects, and the other will leave you more relaxed and likely unable to do much more than lounge around. So do your research and try out different types, uh, sticking with the ones that you like best and that works more with your body type. Here's what to know about vaping C. Oh, there was a link. Sorry, in the article. I forgot to pull that out. So, <laughs> yeah. So trial and error, like anything else. But really having, I've always said, like for inexperienced users, the the best way to get familiar with cannabis is, in my opinion, smoke consumption. Because you can take very small doses and the high will go away really quickly if you don't like it. You know, in an hour, you're going to feel pretty human again. Um and you can keep increasing your intake. It's just different than an edible. And I think a lot of people use edibles as the entry, and I don't think it works. But I also think an important piece is not consuming alcohol and with your cannabis until you understand cannabis and how you feel from cannabis. So just do it alone and do it, like they said, in a safe space, in your own home, in a friend's home. It's important, I think, to be around other people that are consuming because then – what you learn later, what you think is paranoia, and some people still get paranoid, even experienced smokers, but that more paranoid or insecure feeling is because I think personally we were trained, we grew up in a generation of it being a gateway drug. And so there was some level of thrill and maybe a little adrenaline rush and maybe a little fear of it. And there are all these different, um, things that went along with consuming cannabis when we were young and that adds to how now you're going to feel while you're high and so that paranoia kind of I think is this feeling different not really understanding the different feeling that you're having and then having all of these ideas in your mind about like oh my god what's going on with me right now also your brain might be trying to fix some shit you're not ready to <laughs> right, fix but it yet you don't under, but you don't know it you don't know how you're feeling right. yet. you're not yeah. used to it yet yeah. so i think all of these five uh suggestions are super huge yeah i think they were great do you ever wonder if weed expires heck yeah you know the crazy thing about it is like we look at some of the the, the labels and like when it was harvested mm -hmm. and then and then when it was tested and then when it was finally packaged, and then how long ago it takes to when you can't s smoke it or, or when, sell it anymore. Yeah, yeah. It's very weird. Like, sometimes you might see, like, it was packaged, like, in March, or it was harvested in March. A month later, it was tested, or two, a month and a half later, it was tested, and then all of a sudden, like, six months later, finally got packaged. Yeah, so where is it in between? Yeah, it's weird. Like, are they still Sitting in curing it? Yeah, they're still curing it. Do they use it? I have no idea. Just really weird on the packaging. So... So when you're buying weed, do you want to know if it expires or not and whether or not to puff it or pass it? <laughs> yeah. There's truly nothing like enjoying fresh weed. Home grow, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Home grow. <laughs> <laughs> the pungent and enticing aroma, the bright green hues, and the smoothly smoke are simply ex exquisite. But not everyone is lucky enough to have bud straight from the source, leading some to wonder, does weed expire? It's pretty rare for marijuana to go bad like a carton of milk or last week's leftovers. What's more likely is that cannabis flower will degrade, becoming less potent due to the loss of active ingredients like cannabinoids and terpenes. However, it is possible for buds to develop mold, particularly in overhumid conditions. Keeping the weed fresh is all about storage. From the type of container to where you place it in or where you stash it, several factors can affect the shelf life of your cannabis if you want to keep your bud best. It can be. There's plenty of ways to do it. How long does cannabis stay fresh? In the best conditions with proper storage, cannabis can stay fresh for six months to a year or more. However, one wrong move could spell disaster for your beautiful buds. The path to perfect cannabis begins just after harvest. Excess water escapes from the buds in the drying period. Curing takes place after, like a fine wine. Properly aged cannabis has a richer flavor and offers a more enjoyable experience. During the dry and cure phase, moisture makes cannabis susceptible to mold. Mildew can spread quickly and ruin a crop, and the environment is too humid and airflow is stagnant. Smoking moldy weed is extremely dangerous, especially for medical patients, and can lead to a severe lung infection. This is the only time when the answer to does weed expire is resounding yes. 
Unfortunately, once buds make it through the dry and cure stages, the risk of mold dwindles. Also, most licensed cannabis is tested for pathogens to ensure consumer safety. At that point, it's more about potency and quality than pathogens. The best way to store your weed in an eight decades jar. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. It is a smart way. In an airtight container in a cool, dark place. Then no light can get into it, like an eight decades jar. Should also be out of reach of children and pets, preferably in a locked cupboard or a box. Uh, direct exposure to UV rays from the sun or bright light can cause bud to lose potency. The THC will oxidize and turn into something called CBN. This cannabinoid is less psychoactive than THC, meaning that you may get the experience you were you you may not get the experience you were hoping for. But boy, you are gonna get the best sleep of your life though <laughs> if it's got some CBN in it because it's such a good sleep aid. Um, jars or containers that are opaque and keep out of light are the best way to prevent oxidation. While many people like mason jars, they may not keep the UV rays away, but the eight decades jars will. They will. Why, Mrs. Weed Man? Because they have mirror and violet glass. There it is. Dried weed is also less less than desirable. If it left out or in loose bag or container, the air can cause bud to dry out. When this happens, the terpenes evaporate. These are the compounds that are responsible for the flavor and aroma. And some of the effects. If terpenes disappear, cannabis is bland and less potent. Some people have two-way humidity control packs um, and containers. So we, uh, Boveda, we use them. They're great in the, in the eight-decades jars. And also when you're uh, curing your weed, those Grove bags work great. We mm -hmm. just had them on the show. And it keeps the weed fresh and enjoyable. And if you need to put them back in, like if your weed does dry out, put them back in the Grove bags. Put a Boveda pack in there. Close it up for a couple of weeks. It should rehydrate it hmm. a little bit. I don't know how much. I haven't tried it yet. I, I have some older weed like that's been around for a minute that I'm thinking I'm going to throw it in there and try. And then put it right back in the eight decades jar. Yeah. So what happens if you smoke old weed? Smoking old weed is not always dangerous, but it can be less than stellar experience. There are ways to help prolong the shelf life of your bud, but it will eventually degrade over time. According to research, weed loses roughly 16% of its THC after one year. As mentioned uh, in the above part of the article, THC is turning into CBN. CBN may give you a bit of a buzz, but it's nowhere near as strong as THC. However, CBN has become more popular thanks to perceived ability to promote sleep aid. Um, so I don't mind a little older weed because I... I mean, we partake at night before we go to bed, and we want that CBN yeah. for sleep. It still smokes well. Oh, yeah. In rare cases, old weed may develop mold, especially in humid conditions. This is more serious since inhaling mold spores can have serious consequences. You should never smoke bud that looks suspect. It's just not worth the risk. Way to use old weed. If you have bud lying around, it's still, it's still in smokable condition. There are plenty of ways to ensure it doesn't go to waste. There's still THC in there after all. Many people opt to make can of butter. I've done that so many times with older weed that I've had. I just throw it in my, my butter and my stuff, so it, it works great. Um, so you can make all different stuff with your, with your can of butter or can of oil or whatever you do. So uh, eating weed often leads to too much uh, of a nice high, different type of a high. So you should always follow your dosing, what you're, what you're going to dose uh, on when you make your edibles. Uh, and just start low and go slow with edibles. We have said it hundreds of times. If edibles aren't your thing, you could also craft infused topicals, coconut oil or shea butter, THC lotions. That's what we should try to make. We haven't lotions. tried to make coconut. We, we make infused coconut oil. Right. And you just take that coconut oil and put some scent in there and rub right. it on your body if you want it, you know, or shea butter would be kind of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we make so much of it. So um, salves and bombs can be great for aching muscles or itchy skin. They also lack the over psychoactive effects and come from the consumption methods. Topicals also have a long shelf life, meaning you you never need to ask, does weed expire with these products? Hmm. That's pretty good to know. Uh, for people who love to dab, concentrates can be made out of old bud. All you need is some parchment paper and a hair straightener. If it works for you, great. Place nugs inside the paper, fold in half, and squeeze on the straightener. The rosin will goo out. Scrape it off and smoke it. Put that Shoot. in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> Proper storage for other cannabis products. Keep cannabis-infused edibles, vape pens, concentrates, and airtight containers away from kids and pets, just like your bud. It's also crucial to stay away from the sunlight and overall warm temperatures. Uh, edibles and extracts may do best in the refrigerator. Make sure to read the label, discover recommendations. For example, drinks may need to be kept in, in the cold after opening. Keep vape carps and pens in the upright positions. Uh, this helps prevent clogs or leaks. 
Uh, does weed expire uh, when stored properly in a cool, dry place out of direct light? Cannabis can easily last up to a year or more. It may lose potency over time, but it's still smokable. All regulated weed products have expiration dates listed on them, but it's typically more of a suggestion than a rule or anything that's not edible. Smoking older bud may not offer as much kick as when fresh, but likely it won't hurt you. Discard any moldy weed, but feel free to get creative and, sta and stash past its prime. There is plenty of juice for you to squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> How to stop being high. Like if you like you were overly yeah, high. I was overly you high. You were overconsumed. Mm -hmm. You knew it right mm -hmm. when we got home. What are seven tips to come down a little faster? Well, they are relax, uh, use C B D. Um, peppercorns and lemon can help. Hydrating, ibuprofen, talking it out, and eating. So these re relaxation techniques are among the strategies that may help you chill out and come down from the high faster. So you can stop Googling, can weed kill you, as science proves that it can't. Uh, breathe in, breathe out, because you will get through this. Most canvas highs last for 30 minutes to a few hours, so you should be in the clear before you know it. While nothing can help you come down from a high instantly, there's multiple ways to ease your high. So the first one is to create a relaxation station. There's almost nothing worse than someone telling you, just relax, when you're mid-panic. So, while we're not suggesting that a few deep breaths will make you suddenly stop freaking out, it might make you realize that the freak out, freak out will pass. Seek out what you normally do to relax and unwind. It'll help ground you and prepare your mind for rest. For some, that might mean listening to a guided meditation, listening to music, or doing yoga. For others, it might mean watching your go-to comfort show of choice or snuggling with your pet. It really doesn't matter if you're uh, journal, light, lighting a candle, or taking a bath. But in generally, do what you would normally do to relax, and it should help you feel less high and a lot more normal. Uh, two, try some CBD to counteract the THC. CBD is another compound that studies strongly suggest has relaxing and anti-anxiety properties. Since it's known to calm the, nervous cent the central nervous system, it's often used to counter undesired effects of high THC cannabis, like anxiety or paranoia. However, the science is still mixed on whether CBD can actually reduce THC's effects. Most of the evidence supports that the use of CBD combined with THC can ease the psychoactive effects, but it doesn't stop them. So taking CBD after you're already too high from THC might help. No promise, right? Uh, three, chew peppercorns or drink lemon juice. Uh, hashtag stoner talk is full of TikTokers noshing on peppercorns and lemon juice for a reason. Science suggests doing this can help you calm down while toking up. In fact, according to a 2011 review, people may have been drinking a pepper-laden drink to help cool down from cannabis as early as the first century. Both lemons and peppercorns contain fragrant compounds called terpenes, which interact with the terpenes in cannabis to help reduce stress and chill out. The compounds in black pepper may help diminish THC's psychoactive effects, and users compare the effect to using CBD. You don't even have to consume the lemons or peppercorns to reap the benefits. Take a whiff of a jar of whole peppercorns and uh, inhale the fragrance, uh, the fragrance of some lemon rind because it could help. And an important pro tip, avoid inhaling peppercorns that are ground. Don't open a jar of ground pepper and inhale it. That would be a big <laughs> problem. <laughs> that would not help you. Uh, four, down some water. This is what I did yesterday. Got home and I drank a crap ton of water. Um, so it will help flush your system of pretty much anything, cannabis included. Staying hydrated before, during, and after your trip should help the high dissipate faster. Meanwhile, avoiding alcohol and caffeine will help combat dehydration and that yucky dry mouth feeling from too much cannabis. Five, take an ibuprofen. Researcher, research suggests that taking a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug like ibuprofen can mitigate unwanted side effects of THC, including cognition and memory impairments. 
Since these benefits may also extend to suppressing anxiety or racing thoughts, sometimes associated with THC, it may be worth trying. Six, talk to a loved one you can trust. If you're in full panic mode, talking to someone you love and obviously trust won't be, you obviously trust that they won't be judgmental about your cannabis use may help soothe your worries. Someone telling you that you're going to be okay can help you ride it out. Even if you already know it's true, that little extra support can make all the difference. Some online therapy services also have messaging services with your therapist so you can talk it out. You can also put those coping methods you've worked so hard to learn to good use. And seven, eat some food. Munchies aside, getting some healthy food in your system can help your blood sugar levels stabilize, and that will help you feel a bit more normal. So no magic pill will instantly make you feel unhigh. However, doing things like eating the peppercorns, drinking water, and distracting and relaxing yourself can help minimize the high feeling and help you feel better. Remember, you can't overdose on cannabis, but since THC can impede your motor skills, concentration, and cognition, relaxing until the high passes is a good idea. Most highs should go away within a few hours. It's also a good idea to go low and slow to avoid overconsumption in the first place. Yes, it is, but sometimes you get carried away. <laughs> <laughs> when you get joints coming all over the place yeah. at you, you know? Yeah, smoke this, We're smoke not this, Mr. and Mrs. This. Weed Man or Weed Man at 420 because I can outsmoke people. I never said yeah. I never said I can outsmoke anybody. I'm Mr. Weed Man and Weed Man 420 Chronicles, and people call me Weed Man 420 because I've always had weed on me. That's right. And I've been slanging weed and talking about weed forever. Mm -hmm. That's how I got the name. So I've never said I can outsmoke anybody, and I never want to try. I no. just I like to smoke weed, and I enjoy consuming cannabis, and I love it socially. I love it medically. I love it everywhere. That's the difference. I will never try to outsmoke anybody. Just <laughs> not my thing. <laughs> so, and you can't die either. Yeah, I know, smoking right? cannabis or ingesting cannabis either. So know that. Uh, Maryland cannabis market poised for explosive growth in 2024. They're talking Maryland would be like a one billion dollar market. Hmm. That's crazy. They had a little slow, a little slow uh, September, but I mean everybody's September is always kind of slow. But killing it though, killing it, Maryland, you're killing it. Hmm. American Council of Cannabis Medicine Insurance Industry leaders prepare for including medical marijuana. Do you want to know why? Why? Because they're about to make a lot of money being able to put it on your insurance and be able to, you know, yeah, you're eventually going to get it from pharmacies and you'll be able to throw it on your medical insurance and it'll be like uh, part of your, um, you know, when you go get pills or something from the pharmacy. Your prescription. Your prescription. That's what that's called. Mr. Right. Weedman never has a prescription, never. so he doesn't even know what they're called. <laughs> <laughs> It's called your RX, Mr. Weedman, your RX, your even, prescription. I don't I never have them, so I couldn't even tell you. So, But here's a telling tale of why they're excited, because Georgia will be the first state to allow pharmacies to sell medical marijuana. Hmm. Do Go you Georgia. think something that's... You really? I don't know. I don't want to fucking buy weed from a pharmacy. No. You know? No, uh, but there's... I, I understand. Yeah. I'm not saying go Georgia because it's great that they're doing something instead of nothing, you know, uh, but the Georgia Board of Pharmacy began accepting applications this week and nearly 120 pharmacies have agreed to provide medication from Botanical Sciences, one of the state's two licensed production companies. I kind of don't think it's fair because I think dispensaries should be the one selling it, not just a pharmacy, but I, I get it. And this is the way it's going to go. You're basically going to go to Walmart pharmacy one day and be able to pick up your weed. If that's what you want. It'll probably be synthetic because it's the only way they'll be able to govern the... No. And have... No, they're buying from dispensaries. They'll buy from cultivation. They'll probably be federal or state-run cultivation eventually, and you'll be able to go buy... They just said the Georgia Board of Pharmacy began accepting applications this week from nearly 120 pharmacies that have read medication from Botanical Sciences, one of the state's two licensed production companies. Hmm. Cultivation. Hmm. So it's not going to only be synthetic... Right. That's cool. So, I mean, it's going to happen. I, it will. Right? I don't know how cool it is, though, but it's going to happen. So, but I could see now why the Council for Medicine and Insurance Industry leaders prepare for including medical marijuana. 
because it's going into pharmacies. So they're going to make a lot of money. It's not, it, it's it's like a catch-22, right? It's cool. It all depends on where you look at it. It's cool, I guess, that f- they're recognizing it as a medicine, right? And they're they're recognizing it so much so that they're going to prescribe it to patients. And your doctor may become more knowledgeable about its benefits. That's a that's so those things, positive. That's stuff. all positive. It's positive. But on the flip side, it's going to be mass produced. It's going to ultimately probably be synthetic because they won't be able to mass produce it. The quantities and the the potencies and the all the standards and things. It will be very difficult to be cultivating that. So it will likely be synthetic. And then it's going to be like big pharma. It's going to be. Yeah. How fast can we get synthetic in you? (laughs) Yeah, right. How fast? Learn how to home grow. Uh, Kentucky Governor signs executive order uh, creating new medical marijuana work group while launching website, finally, on legalization uh, implementation. So there's a website, uh, KYMedCan, K-Y-M-E-D-C-A-N dot K-Y dot gov. And that's you're going to see now probably because it's January 1st of 2025. It's supposed to go medically legal. So this is where you'll be able to find all the laws, rules, regulations, when you can start applying for cultivation and all that fun stuff. So they're getting moving. Good for you, Governor Andy Bashir. Iowa medical marijuana cards appointments are getting a little costly for just a, for such, such a shitty medical program. They're charging up to 200 bucks now. And then there's $100 annual application fee. Uh, unless patients have a Medicaid or Social Security disability card, so but it's your medical program is just not very good. <laughs> so, uh, Florida Supreme Court to hear arguments on cannabis legalization initiative next month. Just get that on the ballot and watch the magic. What a new House Speaker will mean for marijuana reform, including banking, uh, not very good. McCarthy's out. As we all know, and Jim Jordan from Ohio uh, has voted against 26 cannabis reform proposals during his tenure. Uh, Yeah, great job, Jim. And then uh, Representative Steve Scalise, Representative uh, Louisiana, uh, meanwhile, has voted against bills like the Moore Act and the Safe Banking Act twice each. Um, So, yeah, we got we got a lot of help going on right now in the the House with these two guys. (laughs) Fucking A. Uh, Hawaii company completes first state legal transfer of marijuana between two islands. That's cool. Uh, Illinois sold more recreational marijuana products in September than during any other months since legalization, 139.5 million. So, uh, it did not, it didn't, I mean, yes, they sold a lot, but it didn't break like huge, like amount. I mean, it was only by like a half, half a bill, half a mil or something like that, that it went up, but it's not like huge numbers, but it's good. It's, it's positive. I guess you want to know medical is still doing okay. Still keeping it's 29 to 34 million a month after month, you know? Um, so, and it's just funny cause Pritzker, he just like says we have the best in the whole country on cannabis, you know, how our, our whole entire market is better than anybody else's <laughs> for you. Maybe Okay. <laughs> New Mexico, Keep telling yourself that, yeah. buddy. New Mexico had, uh, had good sales in September too. And they're, th- they're the state crossed the half billion dollar mark pretty good uh rhode island which sold the highest amount of cannabis for the fourth consecutive month uh notching 9.7 in monthly receipts uh montana uh broke a record in august of 23.7 million connecticut broke another record at 25 million worth little connecticut maine 22 million maryland 92 million uh massachusetts sold more than 5 billion since start of recreation so i mean michiganders uh Another record, two hundred seventy-seven million. Just crazy amounts of money right now being spent in the in the cannabis industry. Um, uh, Missouri selling about four million worth of cannabis per day on average. Um, and they needed a record back in June of one hundred twenty-one point two million. I mean, this is vastly going to be like by by twenty twenty-seven, doing mega billions. You know, as a as a as a country, I mean, cra- and insane. Uh, Alabama, roll tide. Medical cannabis conference has been postponed. Pfft, go figure. Can't get those fucking suppositories in people's asses fast <laughs> enough, can you, Alabama? 
<laughs> People Sorry, are just jumping friends. at the chance. Sorry, all my friends down in Alabama. I'm not making fun of you. I'm making fun of your state of the laws because they're fucking terrible. Uh, Wyoming mix-up may cause two eligible cannabis initiatives to miss the ballot. Oh, meh, 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 meh. Wyoming, terrible. Uh, more than 150 Oklahoma dispensaries face new state fines. They, it's just they're still trying to fix the fuck up from the beginning. You know. Uh, uh, so many dis dispensaries open, 8,400 cultivation licenses, and just just craziness. And they still can't fix it, fix their shit. <laughs> um, Vermont celebrates one year of retail cannabis. Way to go, Vermont. Proud of you. New Mexico adult use marijuana sales, like I said, crossed half a billion mark at least at latest monthly sales narrowly missed record. They're killing it in New Mexico. Do you want to know why? Why? Because Texas <laughs> is helping out is a lot. helping out. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so good for you, New Mexico. I'm proud of you. Small cannabis businesses are at risk if safe uh, banking bill passes. Nobody loves the mom and pop shops anymore. They just want all corporate cannabis, and they want corporate this and corporate that. Small businesses still i think employ more than corporations do they're still the backbone of this country mom and pop shops and small businesses are the backbone of this country do not let them fail and like i've said there's enough money for everybody to make in this and you know eventually by like 2027 it's gonna be 50 billion dollars worth everybody can make some money women will rule the world one day won't they mrs weed man i think so so how do we how, how do women and weed face these obstacles they're going through and there's some changes though and you see some great great things coming along right yeah uh for women in the cannabis industry there are challenges at every turn from lack of funding to imposter syndrome the barriers to the success are ample to say the least according to the women in cannabis study only 11 percent of women working in weed consider the space to be equitable fortunately people are working to change the narrative whether it's providing pathways to investment or a safe space to share. These four groups are empowering women in cannabis and having fun doing it. Uh, the first one is Women Grow. Founded in 2014, Women Grow seeks to connect, educate, empower, and inspire through its range of meetups, symposiums, and webinars. Women Grow often has a presence at major industry conferences, including the popular Women Grow Live, activation that was at MJ BizCon, the largest annual trade show for cannabis professionals. Uh, Blunt Brunch, known for their energetic and inspiring events across the country, Blunt Brunch hosts intimate gatherings designed to foster collaboration and community. Their flagship Blunt Brunch Nationals, held during MJ BizCon, offer speed date speed networking not dating speed networking guest speakers and even a dance party to start the week on a high note hell yeah yeah and then we have women employed in cannabis uh the weic is a network of professionals and women-owned businesses created to promote unity and share opportunities with can within cannabis the group recently partnered with cannabis capital advisory firm the panther group to help women secure funding at a time when investments are very hard to come by. And we have Women of Cannabis, the newest group on the list. Women of Cannabis hosts sesh events focused on femininity. Their relaxed environments uh, encourage authentic connection while placing an emphasis on hospitality, putting a new spin on male-centric cannabis gatherings of the past. Being a woman in cannabis is not always easy, but working toward normalization and being part of an emerging space makes it worth it. The energy and encouragement offered by the groups listed above can have a ripple effect that can elevate and inspire women in weed to keep going. That's important. Very important. I love it, that article. I love to see new groups starting up too, you know. Mm -hmm. International news, Fiji to tap into the multi-billion dollar medicinal cannabis industry recreation recreational use still illegal come on fiji i like your water <laughs> <laughs> fiji is considered tapping into the thriving global multi-billion dollar medicinal cannabis industry while the government's backed this groundbreaking endeavor as an exploration for new avenues of economic innovation noting the consideration for cultivation as one promising area 
made it clear that proposed diversification initiative did not mean legalizing recreational use of the herbal uh, of the herbal state. Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister of the Trade, Cooperative, Small and Medium Enterprises and Communications, Manoa Kamekimisia, elaborated on the government's ambition during the Telenona session um, last week and aimed to tap into the economic potential of the industry, which is estimated to turn over uh, $30 billion. Um, that's a lot of money. Not just for Fiji, but he's talking globally. Um, it's essential that to understand the endeavor will closely be regulated and confirmed and secure facilities. There will be no local sales of, or marketing. Instead, the products will be harvested, processed, and exported. Oh, that's not fair. <laughs> the deputy PM also revealed that the proposed initiative had already attracted interest from, from major pharmaceutical companies. He said two conglomerates had expressed initiative to establish operations in the country. One of the companies is not only interested in medicinal cannabis, but also in exploring the potential of traditional Fijian medicine known as Wayak Vaca Viti for international markets. Hmm. I need to look that up. Hmm. <laughs> I want some of that. Wayak Vaca Viti. <laughs> um, Certain strains have proven effective in managing seizures, providing hope for patients with conditions like Dravet syndrome and Lennox Gastrot syndrome. So, uh, a nationwide consult consultation will be conducted to gather public input and opportunity for members of the public to express their opinions, concerns, and suggestions that could shape the future of medicinal cannabis in Fiji. Don't let the conglomerates come in and uh, take over. Do it yourself. Let the people, the locals there, start their own business and then, and then export it out and then sell it for medicinal value in Fiji. Do not let corporate companies come in and pay you, pay just you billions of dollars, uh, prime minister, and leave your people out. Just because they're going to give them jobs doesn't mean shit. They should be the owners, too. So... That's just my opinion. Uh, Australia cannabis market post brisk growth in the first half of 2023. Good for you, Australia. Um, let's see what else does it say here. The next uh, Australia's medical cannabis industry remained in robust health during this first half of the 2023, according to a data from the Therapeutic Goods Administration, the country's medicine and therapeutic regulatory agency. Medicinal cannabis approvals through the authorized prescriber have continued to grow rapidly so far this year. Medical cannabis approvals through the AP reached approximately 304,000 in the first half, up from more than 120% over the same period last year, where there was 137 AP approvals. One of the reasons approvals are rising is because the increasing number of authorized prescribers who are allowed to prescribe certain cannabis products formats in five respective categories. That's good, right? Mm -hmm. So good for you, Australia. Now you need to just go recreational and call it a day so our friends down there uh, can smoke legal weed and legally grow and have some fun. What are some tips cooking while you're baked? We don't smoke a lot. Well, I mean, we probably hit the pen a little bit, but we cook a lot more with, with, with edibles than we, like, smoke while we're cooking. Yeah, but I mean, I that, do, that, but not that all the tends time. to lead to sampling. Yes. Yes. <laughs> because I was just baking while I was high the other night, and I forgot an ingredient. Yes. <laughs> The product still turned out good. Came out great. It was great, but I knew something was missing. Those peanut butter cups are amazing. Oh. So <laughs> everyone has their hobbies. Some keep up with the latest movies, and others like to remote fly fish. Remote fly fish. Oh, they like to hike to remote fly fishing spots. How about that? <laughs> For me, I like to try out new recipes in the kitchen. And as with most of my hobbies, I responsibly enjoy cannabis while I do it. Uh, but getting high before working in the kitchen has its, its risks. I mean, there are both knives and fire involved. Over the years, and through some unfortunate trial and error, I have developed checkpoints for myself. Each checkpoint allows me to enjoy my hobby a little stoned, which is my right as a person over 21 in Washington. In hopes that you won't have to make unfortunate mistakes in your stoned kitchen, I've decided to share some of my favorite tips for baking baked. Number one, read the recipe before getting lit. It's easy to lose momentum after reading a recipe and realizing it takes tools and ingredients that aren't in your kitchen. That goes double for someone riding a weed wave. Before getting set on baking a specific dish, read the recipe. <laughs> I've learned that there could be some ingredients. Yep, I'm looking at you, cream of tartar, or technique, <laughs> and you, piping bag, that isn't a pantry staple but is absolutely required to pull off the recipe. Now, I save myself from disappointment and I ensure I follow through with my mission to cook by reading up on how the dish is made. Two, prep in advance. Nicole Damasio 
has built a following cooking high on social media in the dope kitchen. Green State asked her for one tip for those who want to do the same. The stone chef gave a solid tip. Do all of the chopping before the edibles kick in or your joint is lit. For that matter, consider measuring everything out in that time as well. It's more acceptable to wing it in the in cooking than baking, but having everything prepared like TV chefs has benefits. I've been putting all the ingredients in little dishes to teach my toddler. Okay, so basically bake, baking baked is like being a toddler. <laughs> I put ingredients in little dishes to teach my toddler how to bake lately. And in my off hours of being a mom, when I'm listening to comedy podcasts and pulling a bake together, having pre-measured containers of spices, flour, and such during the process is pretty legit. Three, the ingredient shuffle. Anyone who has forgotten the salt in a soup or the baking powder in a cake knows the sadness that caused me to pick up the habit I'm about to share. Or the powdered sugar in the chocolate. Yeah, I forgot the powdered sugar. <laughs> well, forgetting an ingredient in a baked good can really tank the whole thing. Thankfully, it did not tank mine. No, they're still delicious. I take every ingredient out and put it together on the counter to avoid accidentally flavorless dinners or unrisen biscuits. Sometimes I'll even organize them in order that they go in the bowl. When I use the ingredient, I'll put it on the other side of the counter or put it away altogether. I know I've forgotten a step if anything is left in the ingredient area. Picking up this habit has helped my cakes rise and my savory soup flavors develop for years. It's high time I share it with my fellow cannabis lovers. Four, don't go overboard on the pot. The final tip may be unpopular, but don't get too lifted. More cannabis often means less presence of mind. That leads to things like burnt grilled cheese and ingredients mixed in the wrong order. Avoid that altogether and take a microdose or a small dose when planning to cook with cannabis. While I don't condone cooking stoned, I admit it's something I do. These checkpoints in the kitchen have helped me be successful in that endeavor. Read the recipe, do a sober prep, line up the ingredients, and don't overdo it. Follow those steps, and hopefully you can feel the joy of being a bit high, dancing to Sade, while flamboyantly pouring bowls of flour into the mixer, too. Enjoy. And then smoke a big fatty. Then Yeah, <laughs> and eat whatever it is you made. If you had a cartoon to watch while you were high, what would it be? Mm. Cartoon. Tom and Jerry? Tom and Jerry's a good one. Yeah, I like Tom and Jerry high. <laughs> <laughs> I watch a lot of anime. I love watching anime. Not high, high. Doesn't matter. I can watch it anytime. I probably watch at least a couple episodes while I work out, weekends, whatever. I love anime. Some anime, though, or some cartoons that you can watch high. Uh, you know, Futurama is always a classic. I like Futurama. Mrs. Wee Man's not a big cartoon watcher. So, no, that's why uh, <laughs> uh, Tom and Jerry came to mind. I right. watched it when I was 10. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, SpongeBob SquarePants, though. Oh, I love SpongeBob. You like SpongeBob because of the kids. Mm -hmm. You would watch. I like watching I'd that watch high. That. Uh, Fairly Odd Parents. Those are movies, though. No, Fairly Odd Cosmo and Wanda. No, that's not a movie. This is oh, a that cartoons. was the show. On, uh, yeah. So, um, Ren and Stimpy. You Ren. really liked Ren and Stimpy. Oh, Ren. Now, you yeah. liked Ren and Stimpy, though. So, watching that high. Uh, Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Oh my God, I have not. These are all the shows our kids watch. I know, but Ed and a good one, right? I can't even imagine watching them high. Rugrats. <laughs> what about Scooby Doo? Scooby Doo Doo. Scooby Doo. Um, I liked Bobby's World that was with uh, Howie Mandel, but that was very. I didn't catch every season, though, but that'd be fun. DuckTales. Remember DuckTales? Mm, not really. No? Uh, Beavis and Butthead? Oh, yeah. Right? Right. Pretty funny watching that high. Oh, yeah. You know, what about uh, what about that show that's on Comedy Central? I can't believe it's it's blowing my mind. I must be really high because I still watch <laughs> it all the time. So uh, it started in 1996, and I cannot believe I'm forgetting it. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I also like watching older, uh, older uh, cartoons, too. You know, I mean, I could watch Tom and Jerry. I can watch the uh, any ex old X Men cartoons. I can watch uh, Heckle and Jekyll, Mighty Mouse, uh, 
uh, what Here else? I come to save Mighty the Mighty Mouse day. is great. Mighty Mouse is great. Um, he had the world's biggest chest and tiniest legs. <laughs> yes. Uh, so what's the one I'm missing here? Like South Park. Oh, yeah. South Park. The Simpsons. Watch yeah. The Simpsons High. Uh, what's the uh, one with Peter and Lois? Uh, My Family Guy. Family Guy. Amazing. So many good shows. You know, you can watch... Uh, I mean, baked cartoons, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and if I missed one, shoot me a DM and remind me because there's so <laughs> many good cartoons. I, I mean, I've watched Stoned or still watch to this day and just love. So there's just some, if you're a cartoon watcher, an anime watcher uh, like I am, be stoned, be baked, and love life while you're watching it. <laughs> On that note, I'm going to light up. Mrs. Weedman. Mr. Weedman. Before you light up. Yep. That's the end of the show. That always goes so fast. It does when you're having such a good time with me, right? Yeah. <laughs> always. You got anything else to say? Have a great week, everybody. Don't get too lit like Mrs. Weedman. <laughs> if you do, smell some peppercorns. Yes, or, or, uh, or eat, eat some candy or something. Uh, but everybody out there in the world, we need some peace. We need some yeah, love. We, do. we need some kindness. This world is so messed up right now. There's just people dying all over this world. No matter, just I, I uh, just need some cannabis and some love and some peace and some kindness. And I think it can solve some problems. Not every problem, but some of them anyway. But uh, we love you out there, everybody, man. Peace to you all. Give somebody a hug and tell them you love them, because you never know if you'll see them tomorrow. Right? That's right. So live for today, everybody. Go live your life to the fullest, to the best you can each and every day, and just be you. Be kind. Love one another. As Polly always says, smoke smart. Puff puffing away. Puff puff pass. Check out our cannabis lifestyle brand online at 8decades.com. Our custom smokes and accessories are perfect for your coffee table, bedroom nightstand, or kitchen counter. They're designed for you to show them off. The Canna community is also loving our hemp and cotton blend t-shirts, sweatshirts, scarves, and hats finished off with our 8 Decades logo. We've got some awesome long-lasting goods that will be your favorite for years to come. 8 Decades, because a ninth decade of cannabis prohibition isn't acceptable. 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 Acceptable.